unlike many students, Sarah Ouellette says she's pretty keen to vote. October will be her first federal election as an eligible voter. I've always heard people saying, you know, you can't complain about the government if you're not voting. But when we showed her the eligible voter ID, she said she doesn't have a lot of the documents. The University of Ottawa student is from a small town in Ontario, and her bills still reflect that address. I have a lease. I just didn't change my driver's license yet. When you show up to vote in October, though, do you think you would think to bring your lease with you? No. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> Today at this courthouse, the Canadian Student Federation and the Council of Canadians are trying to get the rules changed, particularly one big piece. They're upset about a new law that says voter ID cards can't be used as proof of address. In a country like ours where we have people, young people at universities without that proof, seniors and residences that don't have addresses, you know, their home addresses anymore, First Nations who rely on the vouching system and so on, it's just a way of saying you people don't matter. But the message to voters is clear. Get ID. From now on, you will require it to vote. The rule is part of the new Fair Elections Act. The government argued the information on the eligible list of voters, which generates the voter ID cards, isn't reliable, citing a one in six error rate. They also point out there are 45 authorized forms of ID. Here's how it'll work. You can vote using one piece of government-issued ID that has a photo, your name, and current address, like a driver's license. If you don't have that, you can use two pieces of ID, one with just your name, like a health card or a debit card, and one with your name and address. Examples of that include a bank or credit card statement, a phone bill, a lease, or letter of confirmation of residence from a student residence, senior's residence, or shelter. If you don't have any of that, you can bring two pieces of ID with your name and someone who knows you, votes in the same polling station as you, and has all of their ID. And that person can take an oath attesting to your address. Now it's up to a judge to decide whether voter ID cards should be back on that list. He's expected to make a decision before July 20th, so Elections Canada can adjust to any potential changes in time for October's federal election. Catherine Cullen, CBC News, Ottawa.